Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for March 19th through 25th. This week I read one book, I watched two movies, I watched one show, and I listened to one audiobook. It feels really weird to be filming this at the time that I am because I usually roll out of bed and film these first thing in the morning. However, first thing in the morning for me was getting out of bed at about 4.30 a.m. to go catch a train, which really felt like 3.30 a.m. because we just had the time change in Europe. I know that North America did it two weekends ago, but we just had it. And then we had to wait till 3 p.m. for the check-in for the hotel. So it is now four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm finally filming my weekly wrap-up. It's just weird that I'm doing it so late. For those of you who actually care about things like travel updates, we left Dusseldorf this morning and we are currently in Bamberg, which is about six hours away by train, five or six hours depending on what's going on. We actually were supposed to come here tomorrow, but tomorrow there is a transit strike. So it's a very good thing that Chad actually saw the email indicating that that was happening so that we could just jump on the trains earlier and then actually get here a day early basically is what happened, which meant less time in Dusseldorf, which is kind of sad because it was a very adorable city. But now we don't have to deal with transit strikes or trying to go the day after transit strikes when everybody else is also trying to travel. I should also mention that yes, I have a few travel vlogs that I've been meaning to make. However, my voice sounds like it does because I still have a little bit of that cold. Like I think the cold is gone. I'm just dealing with the repercussions of like having a gross voice and occasionally coughing and having to blow my nose still every once in a while. So that's why I haven't put out travel vlogs because I sound like this and I'd like to sound better when doing the narration for them. First this week, for the Trans Rights Readathon, I read In Shadowed Dreams. This one is a novella. It just came out pretty recently and I ended up very much enjoying it. I also, in my TBR, said that Audrey was talking about this one. That is incorrect. Rachel from Reads with Rachel was talking about this one and I can see why she really, really enjoyed it. This one is set in a world where magic exists and our main character comes to find out that magic exists. However, finding that out is in the middle of a crisis where magic things are happening, which is never a good time to find that out. In fact, this is kind of told in a couple of different time frames. So we've got the now, where our main character is looking back at the previous, when they found out that magic was real and a big traumatic event was happening. And then we have little vignettes from previous to that as well, just to throw in some context for relationships. And the biggest thing that is happening now is our protagonist is talking to somebody else with magic and trying to figure out who in the city might be able to help them with this magic thing, and then needs to fill in all this context as to why they have a friend who told them about magic but their friend is not really their friend anymore. And it's not because they had a falling out, it's more so because their friend's body is inhabited by a fictional character from a, a book that the friend really liked. I would say I could explain that more clearly, but honestly I can't and you should just go read it for yourself because it is very, very good. I don't understand how all of this backstory and how all of this storytelling really came together as well as it did in this novella. This is definitely a novella for people who love storytelling. On to the movies we watched this week, the first one was called Spiderhead and it's something we just randomly picked because it showed up on Netflix and we went, ah, Chris Hemsworth playing something other than Thor. Sure, why not? And uh, I didn't really have high expectations for this movie. I figured it was a fucked up government people doing fucked up government people things and that's pretty much what it was. There was like a slight twist to it, but that, that's basically what it is. Essentially in this world you have the option of doing your prison sentence in prison like a regular person or going to this very specialized prison where they do experiments on you. Because of this you get a little bit more free reign, you get to walk around, you don't really have a cell, you have a bedroom instead, all of those types of things. But the experiments are pretty shitty and also very unethical, so there's all of that in there. This is pretty much what I expected of it. It's not a great movie, but it wasn't a terrible way to spend an hour and a half. The other movie we watched was Warm Bodies, which is based on the novel of the same name. I finally got around to reading this novel last... October, I believe it was. And since it had taken me so long to get around to actually reading it after it was recommended to me back in 2017, I definitely only remember one big part of the synopsis, that being that it's a zombie book. I definitely forgot that it was also a Romeo and Juliet retelling. So when I was reading the book, I got to page 127, which was the balcony scene, and I went, oh, 
Oh, for the love of God, this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. I think this movie did a pretty good job in the adaptation. Firstly, the main character is aged down a little bit, which is good, because in the book it kind of seemed like he could be about 30 and then his love interest was much younger and I was not down with that. This body actually looked like it could be a teenager, which made it way less weird. Also, they cut out the subplot from the beginning where he had a wife and kids because the, he didn't actually have a wife and kids. It was just a weird zombie ritual type of thing and that definitely didn't need to be in the movie, so I'm glad they cut that bit out. Other than that, it's a zombie movie. It was entertaining. It was interesting to see where it went. The show we've been watching this week is Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, which is a show that is hosted by Jerry Seinfeld. He gets a different car for every episode and he picks up a different comedian and they just go for coffee and they have a chat. Basically, he wanted to have a talk show, but without all the boring things of actually having a talk show. And with the stipulation that he can basically invite whoever he actually wants to talk about to go for coffee and have a chat about comedy. I don't know exactly where we are in the series, but I feel like we've watched basically about three seasons of it. The episodes are pretty short. They're like 15 minute episodes. I feel like it was made for a web show and then eventually Netflix bought it. Although I didn't check into that. That's just my assumption. This was also filmed a while ago, so some of it hasn't aged quite well. Like they'll reference different comedy legends and I'll be like, ooh, this is before we found out that person was a creep. And not every single joke or topic in this has landed for me. There's some stuff that I've been like, oh, well, I disagree with you. But overall, it's an enjoyable experience. The audiobook I listened to for the Trans Rights Readathon is Never Say You Can't Survive. This is a book about writing and how you can actually use writing in times like these to kind of escape from things and also just have a really good time with your internal world, even though the outside world, the world we live in is kind of garbage at times. This had a lot of really good practical writing advice and I would actually like to get a hard copy for this the next time I ever feel like writing something because I feel like I could refer to it quite often and just get some little ideas and just remember that certain things like making the most ridiculous and interesting choice at all times is always going to be a good thing. Other things like everybody has imposter syndrome, you're just going to have to write it. If you like it, that's what you're doing, that's what success is, and other things like that. There's nothing in here that's like, this is a hard and fast rule because there are no hard and fast rules for writing. There's hard and fast rules for grammar and that type of thing, but there's no hard and fast rules for creating a world, characters, situations, and then putting that on a page. I am currently in the middle of two other books for the Trans Rights Readathon, so hopefully I will finish those either today or tomorrow because the readathon ends tomorrow. And of course, I will continue to read trans books in the future because I do that quite often anyway. As you probably know, if you've been here for a while, I'm an advocate for people to read queer all year, so keep doing that. But that's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!